So here's a little electrical trick for uh, welders and generators. Works the same for a generator too. The first couple portables I had, I, uh, I cooked my 20 amp outlets. You got your 20 amp, 20 amp breakers in here on your normal 110 outlets. Fried those on probably I bet three welders before I smelled the coffee and figured this out. But what you can do, I'm sure some other people have figured it out too. But rather than pulling your 110 volts off that uh, 20 amp breaker up here, the lights kind of blind in it. That's 20 amp though. Come over here to your 220 side. Now you're pulling on a 50 amp breaker. And what I did was I wired it. This is my auxiliary cord, my 100, 100 foot long monster cord. I wired the 220 into my four way box on the back of the truck. And then I pulled one leg off the 220 side to give me 110. And the reason I did that is because pulling your 110 on them 20 amp breakers only gives you like 2200 watts. I've literally fried the, the breakers and the internal inline fuses and breakers with the wire feeders just kills them on that 20 amp breaker. So now that I'm pulling off the 220 though, now my 110's pulling off that 50 amp breaker. So now I have, you know, 5,500 watts I can draw because I'm pulling on a 50 amp breaker rather than a 20 amp breaker. And the reason I did this was because that first uh, plasma I had, the hypertherm or whatever there, it had this style of plug-in. It had that sideways prong. So that's what that's all about. So I could plug my plasma in and have 220. So you just got to remember not to plug your 110 shit into this side. I usually have some plastic caps in here just so nobody else walks up. And even though it's marked, people walk right up to it and they've plugged it into the wrong side a couple times. It wasn't a big deal, but... So uh, yeah, that's an easy way to save frying your you know internal 20 amp breakers and shit on your generators or your, your welders. So I uh, just picked up a brand new Trailblazer. Pretty much a big Miller fan as far as that goes, but this is a 1990K3500 that I put together for this last truck. I've had a couple trucks that were a little tall. That shit of climbing up and down gets pretty old after a while, man. So this worked out really good. Found this up in Idaho, had 100,000 on it, big block, 454 TBI. But uh, I didn't do that myself. I got an elect electrician buddy, but uh, that saves you a lot of wear and tear. I don't even use these anymore unless I plug in a grinder on a separate outlet here or something. So as far as your wire feeders though, and anything, anything you're drawing more power on, you'll kill them 20 amp breakers in a few months pulling off of them. Just get you a 220 cord, split it in the back like I just showed you, run 220. You, you actually don't have to even have 220 on one side and 110 on the other. You can just go 110 on each side and have four 110 outlets back there. But like I said, that way, rather than pulling on that 20 amp breaker, now you're pulling on a 50 amp breaker. So you got twice the available wattage. I've never once, never once since I've done this, kicked the 50 amp breaker on anything that I've been running, portable plaz, you know, whatever. So, just passing it on, easy trick, saves a lot of shit on the machine, the first couple Bobcats I had. Um, it actually cooked the 20 amp breaker, and then it cooked something inside. There was a type of inline fuse and shit that it, it fried out too. They just went totally dead. So, wish I'd have known that sooner, but quick trick for, for welders and generators, pull off your 220 so you can pull on a 50 amp breaker, split the legs in your box to your 110, you're good to go.